And I, and I guess the key in this uh, reaction is to identify the, uh, the carboxylic carbon. Yes. So and, it, and, it, and it's and it's really um, it should be pretty obvious to you because it has the most bonds to an electronegative right. atom as well. Right. So you were worried that you, you saw that there's no way to turn this into a carboxy because you can't break these carbon carbon or carbon hydrogen bonds. But this has three bonds to nitrogen, and we can break all three bonds to nitrogen and replace them with three bonds to oxygen to form the carboxy group. Uh, what happens to the nitrogen? It becomes NH4 in these conditions. That is right, NH4 plus under these conditions. Ammonium. All right, so maybe we should just memorize that cyanohydrins can hydrolyze just like normal nitriles. It's not the alcohol that does the thing that's interesting, it's the nitrile. Okay. All right, so this is yet another way to make carboxylic acids. This is a way to make a carboxylic acid with an alpha hydroxy group, starting with this over here. So this is when OCHEM gets difficult when you have to string together a bunch of reactions in a row. And this will probably be the theme for most of the third, of the last section of mm -hmm. OCHEM, right? Well, what theme? Mul multiple reagents. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the theme for the whole course. But yeah, now that you know more reactions, you can have more reactions in a row. So I would definitely expect on the test that you'll see problems like this where you have a sequence of um, things added, and then you have to go through the steps like we have here. And sometimes those might, that just might, uh, that just might indicate that you have to predict the products maybe three different times in a particular reaction. That's right. Okay. That's right. So even if he just wants the final product, you still need to draw the intermediates just so that you can think clearly about it. Okay. And in many cases, it helps to actually draw the mechanism too. So you is, it, is, that, in, is that the best way to attack a problem like this? Not necessarily just predict, predict the product and not do any work right. with the molecule? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. What I have on the board is how I think you should do this problem on the actual okay. test. Okay. The way you should do this on the actual test is to use this type of scratch work. Um, that might be somewhat time consuming, but it's better than not having any idea what to do. This is really the only way to work this out. Uh, you just have to have done so many, uh, hopefully you can do enough practice problems so it doesn't take you too long to go through this. So that's where the practice comes in. Okay, well, uh, it took us a long time, but it took us one whole session and a lot of today's session just to cover all the different types of hydrolyses. Uh, but that's important and it'll be important even after the test. Now we've covered all those types of hydrolyses, you need to practice that. Okay. Now the next thing your instructor covered in their notes was reaction with alcohols. Okay. Um, on carboxylic acids? On carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. Um, but we're not going to go through that um, because it's very similar to attack with, uh, with uh, OH. Okay. So, so here's a general form of a carboxylic acid derivative. So what product would we get if we react this carboxylic acid derivative with water? Um, you're going to get a uh, you're going to get a carboxylic acid. Yeah. What's the name of that reaction? It's a hydrolysis. Okay. Good. That's what we've just been covering lots of different <laughs> examples of. Where did this OH come from? Um, the water molecule. Right. It doesn't look like water anymore because at some point the water deprotonated, but it came from the water. Okay. All right. Well, the attack of an alcohol on the carboxylic acid is very similar. This was actually, the other reason we won't cover this is this was actually covered in uh, some of the other videos you've already okay. seen. Um, so you can go back and review it in the other videos. Let's just say, what, what's the product of this going to be? What's the product going to look like? If this is going to give us a similar reaction to this. It's going to be... Um it's going to be um, an ester. Okay, so what should I draw here? What is it going to look like? It's going to be a, a, a carboxylic, and the L group will be the an OR group because it will have been deprotonated. That is the key. Excellent. That is the key. That is a very good answer. Many people get that wrong. Now, many people think that after the oxygen attacks, they assume that it will lose the R group. I don't know why they think that, but people tend to assume yeah. it's going to lose the R group. But that would be a dealkylation, which almost never happens. What does happen is deprotonations. So when this attacks, eventually it's going to lose the H and turn it into an OR. And then it's hard to remember this even came from an alcohol in the first place because it doesn't have the hydrogen anymore. The mistake we want to avoid is just dropping the R group. That doesn't make any sense. We almost never do dealkylations. De what we do is deprotonations. 
All right, so, so it would be easy to also want to just think you have a carboxylic acid again because you already have your OH right. and to not deprotonate. That's right. That's right. But after this attacks, it's going to have too many. It's going to have too many bonds. It needs to lose a bond to something, so it's going to lose the hydrogen. All right. So this was covered in the other videos, and it's very similar to hydrolysis. So for time, we won't go through all of that. Uh, but you can review those in the lecture notes and try to do some problems about that. And you're right. This turns into an ester. So these and are called esterifications. And, and, I, and I guess the important thing is to remember this not under test stress that you're going to yeah. want to. It's different from the ketone and it's different from the aldehyde that it's right. going to want to reform the carbonyl, ox the carbonyl right. carbon oxygen bond. Because that's easy when you see right. alcohol to mistake it and think that you're going to have uh, you know, an OH group and then a nucleophilic group. That's a very For me at least, yeah. No, I agree. That's a very common student mistake. We knew that if we had an aldehyde or a ketone, then the alcohol would give us a category two attack and form an acetal or a ketal. So it's very good that you emphasized that the attack of nucleophiles on carboxylic acids and acid derivatives is totally different from the attack on aldehydes and ketones. Uh, when we attack an aldehyde or a ketone, we can't reform the carbonyl because there's no good leaving group like we have here. Um, but here we do have a possible leaving group. So. so I guess this is why you emphasize always identifying the functional group before yeah. we even start the problem. Yeah, that is exactly right as well. That's why I always keep asking yeah, what's the functional group. Absolutely. Because if it's an aldehyde or a ketone, it will react very differently than if it's a carboxylic acid derivative. So it's good that you're just realizing this is how we write carboxylic acid derivatives. This could be an acyl halide or an anhydride or an ester or an amide. The one thing it can't be is an aldehyde or a ketone. We wouldn't use L for an aldehyde or a ketone. Yeah. So, uh, so this would give us an ester. And then some reactions require acid or base catalysts. Some of them require heat. It's pretty similar, though, to the ideas for hydrolysis. So um, that's covered in the other videos. So that would be all we'll say about that for right now. So this is an important reaction, but I think you can cover that on your sure. own now. Here's another reaction that we're going to kind of skip over because it follows the same pattern. How do you think that ammonia, what product would we get if ammonia reacts with this? It's going to follow the same exact pattern. So what should I draw as the product here? Good. So what should it look like? Uh, carbox, mm -hmm. you should have, in replace of the L group, you should have NH2. Good. Not NH3 because at some point this is going to have to deprotonate. Okay. And you're right, this gives us an aromat. Okay. Um, so just like an attack with an alcohol gives us an ester, an you, attack with you usually see heat in, in, in a reaction like this? You need heat if your starting material is okay. an amide, okay. Okay. not to produce amide. Right. In fact, it's actually very easy to produce amides because they're at the bottom. So when you're producing amide, you usually don't need heat. And it just act, does it just act as like a base and does a nucleophilic attack, more or less, on this? Okay. Yeah, this is the basic idea. Now, we might have to also intersperse that with uh, protonations and deprotonations, but this is the basic idea. Just like here, the basic idea is this, and here, all right, the basic idea is this. And then it just attacked the carbonyl, and then reformed the carbonyl, kicking off the leaving group. Okay. Um, the only tricky part is getting in the right protonations and deprotonations. All right, and again, we have to recognize that this is going to lose some hydrogens. Let's do the same deal here. This should be very similar again. What would the product look like here? It would be uh, it would be an amine, but it would have uh, it'd be NH. And what should I draw here? Um, um, you should draw actually. Uh, You should draw just what you have there, and uh, well, you should draw. Uh, what should go here? An NH with an alkyl group attached to the end. Is That's that it. An NHR. <coughs> the key point is again, a lot of people here would put NH2 because mm -hmm. a lot of people for some reason think that you're going to lose the R group. We don't lose the R group; we lose the H. We're not going to dealkylate; we're going to deprotonate. Okay. Just like here. 
the oxygen attacks and eventually loses a proton. Or here, the oxygen attacks and eventually loses a proton. Or here, the nitrogen attaches and eventually loses a proton. Here again, the nitrogen attacks and at some point it's going to lose a proton. What type of functional group is this? Yeah, it's just another amine. We said that the amine nitrogen could be attached to protons or it could be attached to one or more carbons. It doesn't really matter. If we wanted to, we could even start uh, with two carbons over here. Okay. Um, so then this would have two carbons at the end. All right, so that's again another, we won't go through the whole mechanism, but the first step is the same as in all the other cases. Okay.